in today's tutorial, we're going to be transforming this simple text into this using a couple of very basic functions that are already built into Photoshop. Let's crack on. We're going to start by selecting our text layer, right clicking and clicking rasterize type. If you have more than one text layer, simply select them all and merge them together and they'll rasterize automatically. From here, we're going to go to filter, blur gallery and field blur. Now, once you're in here, you're going to see this small dial here. You can drag this around and using the outer circle, you can hold down and increase or decrease the blur. So let's say for demonstration purposes, I'm going to whack that all the way up. You can click in another region and you can customize the blur in that area also. So once you play around with that and you're happy, click OK at the top and you should be left with something like this. If you are working with white text or black text, just ensure that the foreground color is the color of your text. I do recommend working in either black or white. You can, of course, change these colors later and I'll show you how. So in our example, our text is white, so our foreground color will be white. With that covered, we will combine our blur result with our background layer and go to Filter, Filter Gallery, Graphic Pen. These are the options that I used. You can, of course, play around with the options and see what kind of results you get. Click OK. We're going to go back into Filter Gallery, and this time we're going to select Torn Edges. Now, these are the settings that I used. Again, play around, feel free to experiment. Click OK. But at this stage, the text is almost unusable. We want to be able to drag it and and layer it on top of other images and use it within our designs. With that said, the next thing to do is to isolate this from the background. We start by selecting our layer, click and select, select all, edit, cut, activate the quick mask mode, or click Q, edit, paste special, paste in place, deactivate the quick mask tool, and as you can see, my selection is around the text. It's not going around the outside, so I can fill that with white. If it was going around the outside, we would just invert the selection and then fill with white or black. And now I'll quickly create a new layer just so we can see what's happened. The blur result or the texture result is here. We can change the color. We can, we can add an image to the background. We can drag and drop this on, on anything we want. As you can see, it's slightly transparent as well, which makes it perfect for adding on top of images. We could stop there, but I'm going to add some extra details to make it even more interesting. Here I have a couple of textures from my Grunge Paper Texture Pack. These are transparent PNG textures. As you can see, as I put the background in, you can see what the original texture looked like when I scanned it in. But I've isolated these interesting elements to make them easier to work with. So I can copy and paste that directly on top of our text here. And I can use these by clicking control and click on the thumbnail preview, selecting our text and hitting backspace or delete. And what that's done is incorporate that texture directly into our overall effect. And we can use more than one. So I'll grab another one here, paste it on top. I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times to increase the effect, merge them together, do the same again. Command or Control click on the thumbnail preview. Click our blur result, hit backspace to delete. Command D or Control D to deselect and then delete that texture layer. And we're left with this. As the texture is entirely transparent, you can increase or decrease the contrast by simply duplicating the layer. So with our result selected, we can hit Control or Command J and that will duplicate. And as you can see, the contrast increased, became more visible, and the end result is super effective. I hope you find this useful. I'd love to see what you come up with. To find everything that I do, visit TomChalky.com.